The Illuminati, plural of Latin Illuminatus, enlightened, is a name given to several groups, both real and fictitious. Historically, the name usually refers to the Bavarian Illuminati, an Enlightenment era secret society founded on May 1, 1776. The society's goals were to oppose superstition, obscurantism, religious influence over public life, and abuses of state power. The order of the day, they wrote in their general statutes, is to put an end to the machinations of the purveyors of injustice, to control them without dominating them. The Illuminati along with Freemasonry and other secret societies were outlawed through edict, by the Bavarian ruler, Charles Theodore, with the encouragement of the Roman Catholic Church, in 1784, 1785, 1787, and 1790. In the several years following, the group was vilified by conservative and religious critics who claimed that they continued underground and were responsible for the French Revolution. Many influential intellectuals and progressive politicians counted themselves as members, including Ferdinand of Brunswick and the diplomat Xavier von Zwack, who was the order's second in command. It attracted literary men such as Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and Johann Gottfried Herder and the reigning dukes of Gotha and Weimar. In subsequent use, Illuminati refers to various organizations which claim or are purported to have links to the original Bavarian Illuminati or similar secret societies, though these links are unsubstantiated. They are often alleged to conspire to control world affairs, by masterminding events and planting agents in government and corporations, in order to gain political power and influence and to establish a new world order. Central to some of the most widely known and elaborate conspiracy theories, the Illuminati have been depicted as lurking in the shadows and pulling the strings and levers of power in dozens of novels, films, television shows, comics, video games, and music videos. History Origins Adam Weishaupt, 1748-1830, was a professor of canon law and practical philosophy at the University of Ingolstadt. He was the only non-clerical professor at an institution run by Jesuits, whose order had been dissolved in 1773. The Jesuits of Ingolstadt, however, still retained the purse strings and some power at the university, which they continued to regard as their own. Constant attempts were made to frustrate and discredit non-clerical staff, especially when course material contained anything they regarded as liberal or Protestant. Weishaupt became deeply anti-clerical, resolving to spread the ideals of the Enlightenment, Aufklärung, through some sort of secret society of like-minded individuals. Finding Freemasonry to be expensive, and not open to his ideas, he founded his own society which was to have a gradal system based on Freemasonry, but his own agenda. His original name for the new order was Bund der Perfectibilisten, or Covenant of Perfectibility, Perfectibilists, later changing it because it sounded too strange. On May 1, 1776 Weishaupt and four students formed the Perfectibilists taking the Owl of Minerva as their symbol. The members were to use aliases within the society. Weishaupt became Spartacus. Law students Massenhausen, Bauerhoff, Mers, and Suter became respectively Ajax, Agathon, Tiberius and Erasmus Roderidimus. Weishaupt later expelled Suter for indolence. It was not until April 1778 that the order became the Illuminate Norden, or Order of Illuminati, after Weishaupt had seriously contemplated the B Order. Massenhausen was initially the most active in expanding the society. Significantly, while studying in Munich shortly after the formation of the Order, he recruited Xavier von Zwack, a former pupil of Weishaupt at the beginning of a significant administrative career. At the time, he was in charge of the Bavarian National Lottery. Massenhausen's enthusiasm soon became a liability in the eyes of Weishaupt, often attempting to recruit unsuitable candidates. Later, 
his erratic love life made him neglectful, and as Weishaupt passed control of the Munich group to Zwack, it became clear that Massenhausen had misappropriated subscriptions and intercepted correspondence between Weishaupt and Zwack. In 1778, Massenhausen graduated and took a post outside Bavaria, taking no further interest in the order. At this time, the order had a nominal membership of 12. With the departure of Massenhausen, Zwack immediately applied himself to recruiting more mature and important recruits. Most prized by Weishaupt was Hertel, a childhood friend and a canon of the Munich Frauenkirche. By the end of summer 1778 the order had 27 members, still counting Massenhausen, in five commands, Munich, Athens, Ingolstadt, Eleusis, Ravensburg, Sparta, Freisingen, Thebes, and Eichstätt, Erzurum. During this early period, the order had three grades of novice, Minerval and illuminated Minerval, of which only the Minerval grade involved a complicated ceremony. In this the candidate was given secret signs and a password. A system of mutual espionage kept Weishaupt informed of the activities and character of all his members, his favorites becoming members of the ruling council, or Areopagus. Some novices were permitted to recruit, becoming insinuants. Christians of good character were actively sought, with Jews and pagans specifically excluded, along with women, monks and members of other secret societies. Favored candidates were rich, docile, willing to learn, and aged 1830. Transition Having, with difficulty, dissuaded some of his members from joining the Freemasons, Weishaupt decided to join the older order to acquire material to expand his own ritual. He was admitted to lodge prudence of the right of strict observance early in February 1777. His progress through the three degrees of Blue Lodge Masonry taught him nothing of the higher degrees he sought to exploit, but in the following year a priest called Abbe Marathi informed Zwack that these inner secrets rested on knowledge of the older religion and the primitive church. Zwack persuaded Weishaupt that their own order should enter into friendly relations with Freemasonry, and obtain the dispensation to set up their own lodge. At this stage, December 1778, the addition of the first three degrees of Freemasonry was seen as a secondary project. With little difficulty, a warrant was obtained from the Grand Lodge of Prussia called the Royal York for Friendship, and the new lodge was called Theodore of the Good Council, with the intention of flattering Charles Theodore, Elector of Bavaria. It was founded in Munich on March 21, 1779, and quickly packed with Illuminati. The first master, a man called Radl, was persuaded to return home to Baden, and by July Weishaupt's order ran the lodge. The next step involved independence from their Grand Lodge. By establishing Masonic relations with the Union Lodge in Frankfurt, affiliated to the premier Grand Lodge of England, Lodge Theodore became independently recognized, and able to declare its independence. As a new mother lodge, it could now spawn lodges of its own. The recruiting drive amongst the Frankfurt Masons also obtained the allegiance of Adolf Freiherr Nigg. Reform Adolf Nigg Nigg was recruited late in 1780 at a convention of the right of strict observance by Costanzo Marchese di Costanzo, an infantry captain in the Bavarian army and a fellow Freemason. Nigg, still in his twenties, had already reached the highest initiatory grades of his order and had arrived with his own grand plans for its reform. Disappointed that his scheme found no support, Nig was immediately intrigued when Costanzo informed him that the order that he sought to create already existed. Nig and three of his friends expressed a strong interest in learning more of this order, and Costanzo showed them material relating to the Minerval grade. The teaching material for the grade was liberal literature which was banned in Bavaria, but common knowledge in the Protestant German states. Nig's three companions became disillusioned and had no more to do with Costanzo, 
but Nig's persistence was rewarded in November 1780 by a letter from Weishaupt. Nig's connections, both within and outside of Freemasonry, made him an ideal recruit. Nig, for his own part, was flattered by the attention, and drawn towards the order's stated aims of education and the protection of mankind from despotism. Weishaupt managed to acknowledge, and pledge to support, Nig's interest in alchemy and the higher sciences. Nig replied to Weishaupt outlining his plans for the reform of Freemasonry as the strict observance began to question its own origins. Weishaupt set Nig the task of recruiting before he could be admitted to the higher grades of the order. Nig accepted, on the condition that he be allowed to choose his own recruiting grounds. Many other Masons found Nig's description of the new Masonic order attractive, and were enrolled in the Minerval grade of the Illuminati. Nig appeared at this time to believe in the most serene superiors which Weishaupt claimed to serve. His inability to articulate anything about the higher degrees of the order became increasingly embarrassing, but in delaying any help, Weishaupt gave him an extra task. Provided with material by Weishaupt, Nig now produced pamphlets outlining the activities of the outlawed Jesuits, purporting to show how they continued to thrive and recruit, especially in Bavaria. Meanwhile, Nig's inability to give his recruits any satisfactory response to questions regarding the higher grades was making his position untenable, and he wrote to Weishaupt to this effect. In January 1781, faced with the prospect of losing Nig and his Masonic recruits, Weishaupt finally confessed that his superiors and the supposed antiquity of the order were fictions, and the higher degrees had yet to be written. If Nig had expected to learn the promised deep secrets of Freemasonry in the higher degrees of the Illuminati, he was surprisingly calm about Weishaupt's revelation. Weishaupt promised Nig a free hand in the creation of the higher degrees, and also promised to send him his own notes. For his own part, Nig welcomed the opportunity to use the order as a vehicle for his own ideas. His new approach would, he claimed, make the Illuminati more attractive to prospective members in the Protestant kingdoms of Germany. In November 1781 the Areopagus advanced Nig 50 florins to travel to Bavaria, which he did via Swabia and Franconia, meeting and enjoying the hospitality of other Illuminati on his journey. Internal Problems The order had now developed profound internal divisions. The Eichstätt Command had formed an autonomous province in July 1780, and a rift was growing between Weishaupt and the Areopagus, who found him stubborn, dictatorial, and inconsistent. Nig fitted readily into the role of peacemaker. In discussions with the Areopagus and Weishaupt, Nig identified two areas which were problematic. Weishaupt's emphasis on the recruitment of university students meant that senior positions in the order often had to be filled by young men with little practical experience. Secondly, the anti-Jesuit ethos of the order at its inception had become a general anti-religious sentiment, which Nig knew would be a problem in recruiting the senior Freemasons that the order now sought to attract. Nig felt keenly the stifling grip of conservative Catholicism in Bavaria and understood the anti-religious feelings that this produced in the liberal Illuminati, but he also saw the negative impression these same feelings would engender in Protestant states, inhibiting the spread of the order in Greater Germany. Both the Areopagus and Weishaupt felt powerless to do anything less than give Nig a free hand. He had the contacts within and outside of Freemasonry that they needed, and he had the skill as a ritualist to build their projected gradle structure where they had ground to a halt at Illuminatus Minor, with only the Minerval grade below and the merest sketches of higher grades. The only restrictions imposed were the need to discuss the inner secrets of the highest grades, and the necessity of submitting his new grades for approval. Meanwhile, the scheme to propagate Illuminatism as a legitimate branch of Freemasonry had stalled. While Lodge Theodore was now in their control, a chapter of elect masters attached to it only had one member from the order, and still had a constitutional superiority to the craft lodge controlled by the Illuminati. The chapter would be difficult to persuade to submit to the Areopagus, 
and formed a very real barrier to Lodge Theodore becoming the first Mother Lodge of a new illuminated Freemasonry. A treaty of alliance was signed between the Order and the Chapter, and by the end of January 1781 four daughter lodges had been created, but independence was not in the Chapter's agenda. Costanza wrote to the Royal York pointing out the discrepancy between the fees dispatched to their new Grand Lodge and the service they had received in return. The Royal York, unwilling to lose the revenue, offered to confer the higher secrets of Freemasonry on a representative that their Munich brethren would dispatch to Berlin. Costanza accordingly set off for Prussia on April 4, 1780, with instructions to negotiate a reduction in Theodore's fees while he was there. On the way, he managed to have an argument with a Frenchman on the subject of a lady with whom they were sharing a carriage. The Frenchman sent a message ahead to the king, some time before they reached Berlin, denouncing Costanza as a spy. He was only freed from prison with the help of the Grand Master of Royal York, and was expelled from Prussia having accomplished nothing. New System Nig's initial plan to obtain a constitution from London would, they realized, have been seen through by the chapter. Until such time as they could take over other Masonic lodges that their chapter could not control, they were for the moment content to rewrite the three degrees for the lodges which they administered. On January 20, 1782 Nig tabulated his new system of grades for the order. These were arranged in three classes. Class I the nursery, consisting of the novitiate, the Minerval, and Illuminatus minor. Class II the Masonic grades. The three blue lodge grades of apprentice, companion, and master were separated from the higher Scottish grades of Scottish novice and Scottish knight. Class III the mysteries. The lesser mysteries were the grades of priest and prince, followed by the greater mysteries in the grades of mage and king. It is unlikely that the rituals for the greater mysteries were ever written. Attempts at Expansion Nig's recruitment from German Freemasonry was far from random. He targeted the masters and wardens, the men who ran the lodges, and were often able to place the entire lodge at the disposal of the Illuminati. In Aachen, Baron de Witt, master of Constancy Lodge, caused every member to join the order. In this way, the order expanded rapidly in central and southern Germany, and obtained a foothold in Austria. Moving into the spring of 1782, the handful of students that had started the order had swelled to about 300 members, only 20 of the new recruits being students. In Munich, the first half of 1782 saw huge changes in the government of Lodge Theodore. In February, Weishaupt had offered to split the lodge, with the Illuminati going their own way and the chapter taking any remaining traditionalists into their own continuation of Theodore. At this point, the chapter unexpectedly capitulated, and the Illuminati had complete control of lodge and chapter. In June, both lodge and chapter sent letters severing relations with Royal York, citing their own faithfulness in paying for their recognition, and Royal York's failure to provide any instruction into the higher grades. Their neglect of Costanza, failure to defend him from malicious charges or prevent his expulsion from Prussia, were also cited. They had made no effort to provide Costanza with the promised secrets, and the Munich Masons now suspected that their brethren in Berlin relied on the mystical French higher grades which they sought to avoid. Lodge Theodore was now independent. The right of strict observance was now in a critical state. Its nominal leader was Prince Karl of Södermanland, later Charles XIII of Sweden, openly suspected of trying to absorb the right into the Swedish right, which he already controlled. The German lodges looked for leadership to Duke Ferdinand of brunswick Wolfenbüttel. Suspicion turned to open contempt when it transpired that Karl regarded the Stuart heir to the British throne as the true Grand Master and the lodges of the strict observance all but ignored their Grand Master. This impasse led to the Convent of Wilhelmsbad. Convent of Wilhelmsbad Delayed from October 15, 1781, 
the last convention of the strict observance finally opened on July 16, 1782 in the spa town of Wilhelmsbad on the outskirts of, now part of, Hanau. Ostensibly a discussion of the future of the order, the 35 delegates knew that the strict observance in its current form was doomed, and that the convent of Wilhelmsbad would be a struggle over the pieces between the German mystics, under Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel and their host Prince Charles of Hesse Castle, and the Martinists, under Jean Baptiste Willermas. The only dissenting voices to mystical higher grades were Johann Joachim Christoph Bode, who was horrified by Martinism, but whose proposed alternatives were as yet unformed, and Franz Dietrich von Dittfurth, a judge from Wetzlar and master of the Joseph of the Three Helmets Lodge there who was already a member of the Illuminati. Did Firth publicly campaigned for a return to the basic three degrees of Freemasonry, which was the least likely outcome of the convention. The mystics already had coherent plans to replace the higher degrees. The lack of a coherent alternative to the two strains of mysticism allowed the Illuminati to present themselves as a credible option. Did Firth, prompted and assisted by Nig, who now had full authority to act for the order, became their spokesman. Nig's original plan to propose an alliance between the two orders was rejected by Weishaupt, who saw no point in an alliance with a dying order. His new plan was to recruit the Masons opposed to the Templar higher degree of the strict observance. At the convent, did Firth blocked the attempts of Willer Maas and Hesse to introduce their own higher grades by insisting that full details of such degrees be revealed to the delegates. The frustration of the German mystics led to their enrolling Count Collare with the Illuminati with a view to later affiliation. Did Firth's own agenda was to replace all of the higher degrees with a single fourth degree, with no pretensions to further Masonic revelations. Finding no support for his plan, he left the convent prematurely, writing to the Areopagus that he expected nothing good of the assembly. In an attempt to satisfy everybody, the convent of Wilhelmsbad achieved little. They renounced the Templar origins of their ritual, while retaining the Templar titles, trappings, and administrative structure. Charles of Hesse and Ferdinand of Brunswick remained at the head of the order, but in practice the lodges were almost independent. The Germans also adopted the name of the French Order of Willermas, Les Chevaliers by Enfaisance de la Cite Saint, Good Knights of the Holy City, and some Martinist mysticism was imported into the first three degrees, which were now the only essential degrees of Freemasonry. Crucially, individual lodges of the order were now allowed to fraternise with lodges of other systems. The new Scottish grade introduced with the Lion Ritual of Willer Maas was not compulsory, each province and prefecture was free to decide what, if anything, happened after the three craft degrees. Finally, in an effort to show that something had been achieved, the convent regulated at length on etiquette, titles, and a new numbering for the provinces. Aftermath of Wilhelmsbad what the convent of Wilhelmsbad actually achieved was the demise of the strict observance. It renounced its own origin myth, along with the higher degrees which bound its highest and most influential members. It abolished the strict control which had kept the order united, and alienated many Germans who mistrusted Martinism. Bode, who was repelled by Martinism, immediately entered negotiations with Nig and finally joined the Illuminati in January 1783. Charles of Hesse joined the following month. Nig's first efforts at an alliance with the intact German Grand Lodges failed, but Weishaupt persisted. He proposed a new federation where all of the German Lodges would practice an agreed, unified system in the essential three degrees of Freemasonry, and be left to their own devices as to which, if any system of higher degrees they wished to pursue. This would be a federation of Grand Lodges, and members would be free to visit any of the Blue Lodges, in any jurisdiction. All Lodge Masters would be elected, and no fees would be paid to any central authority whatsoever. Groups of Lodges would be subject to a Scottish Directorate, composed of members delegated by Lodges, to audit finances, 
settle disputes, and authorize new lodges. These in turn would elect provincial directorates, who would elect inspectors, who would elect the national director. This system would correct the current imbalance in German Freemasonry, where Masonic ideals of equality were preserved only in the lower three symbolic degrees. The various systems of higher degrees were dominated by the elite who could afford researches in alchemy and mysticism. To Weishaupt and Nig, the proposed federation was also a vehicle to propagate Illuminism throughout German Freemasonry. Their intention was to use their new federation, with its emphasis on the fundamental degrees, to remove all allegiance to strict observance, allowing the eclectic system of the Illuminati to take its place. The circular announcing the new federation outlined the faults of German Freemasonry, that unsuitable men with money were often admitted on the basis of their wealth, that the corruption of civil society had infected the lodges. Having advocated the deregulation of the higher grades of the German lodges, the Illuminati now announced their own, from their unknown superiors. Lodge Theodore, newly independent from Royal York, set themselves up as a provincial Grand Lodge. Nig, in a letter to all the Royal York Lodges, now accused that Grand Lodge of decadence. Their Freemasonry had allegedly been corrupted by the Jesuits. Strict observance was now attacked as a creation of the Stuarts, devoid of all moral virtue. The Zinnendorf Rite of the Grand Land Lodge of the Freemasons of Germany was suspect because its author was in league with the Swedes. This direct attack had the opposite effect to that intended by Weishaupt, it offended many of its readers. The Grand Lodge of the Grand Orient of Warsaw, which controlled Freemasonry in Poland and Lithuania, was happy to participate in the Federation only as far as the first three degrees. Their insistence on independence had kept them from the strict observance, and would now keep them from the Illuminati whose plan to annex Freemasonry rested on their own higher degrees. By the end of January 1783 the Illuminati's Masonic contingent had seven lodges. It was not only the clumsy appeal of the Illuminati that left the Federation short of members. Lodge Theodore was recently formed and did not command respect like the older lodges. Most of all, the Freemasons most likely to be attracted to the Federation saw the Illuminati as an ally against the mystics and Martinists, but valued their own freedom too highly to be caught in another restrictive organization. Even Dit Firth, the supposed representative of the Illuminati at Wilhelmsbad, had pursued his own agenda at the convent. The non-mystical Frankfurt Lodges created an eclectic alliance, which was almost indistinguishable in constitution and aims from the Illuminati's federation. Far from seeing this as a threat, after some discussion the Illuminati lodges joined the new alliance. Three Illuminati now sat on the committee charged with writing the new Masonic statutes. Aside from strengthening relations between their three lodges, the Illuminati seemed to have gained no advantage from this maneuver. Did Firth having found a Masonic organization that worked towards his own ambitions for Freemasonry, took little interest in the Illuminati after his adherence to the Eclectic Alliance. In reality, the creation of the Eclectic Alliance had undermined all of the subtle plans of the Illuminati to spread their own doctrine through Freemasonry. Zenith Although their hopes of mass recruitment through Freemasonry had been frustrated, the Illuminati continued to recruit well at an individual level. In Bavaria, the succession of Charles Theodore initially led to a liberalization of attitudes and laws, but the clergy and courtiers, guarding their own power and privilege, persuaded the weak-willed monarch to reverse his reforms, and Bavaria's repression of liberal thought returned. This reversal led to a general resentment of the monarch and the church among the educated classes, which provided a perfect recruiting ground for the Illuminati. A number of Freemasons from Prudence Lodge, disaffected by the Martinist rites of the Chevaliers by Enfazants, joined Lodge Theodore, who set themselves up in a gardened mansion which contained their library of liberal literature. Illuminati circles in the rest of Germany expanded. While some had only modest gains, 
the circle in Mainz almost doubled from 31 to 61 members. Reaction to state Catholicism led to gains in Austria, and footholds were obtained in Warsaw, Pressburg, Bratislava, Tyrol, Milan, and Switzerland. The total number of verifiable members at the end of 1784 is around 650. Weishaupt and Hertel later claimed a figure of 2,500. The higher figure is largely explained by the inclusion of members of Masonic lodges that the Illuminati claimed to control, but it is likely that the names of all the Illuminati are not known, and the true figure lies somewhere between 650 and 2,500. The importance of the order lay in its successful recruitment of the professional classes, churchmen, academics, doctors, and lawyers, and its more recent acquisition of powerful benefactors. Karl August, Grand Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach, Ernest II, Duke of Saxe Gotha Altenburg with his brother and later successor August, Karl Theodor Anton Maria von Dahlberg Governor of Erfurt, Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel, already mentioned, his chief assistant in Masonic matters, Johann Friedrich von Swartz, and Count Metternich of Koblenz were all enrolled. In Vienna, Count Brigido, Governor of Galicia, Count Leopold Kolorat, Chancellor of Bohemia with his Vice-Chancellor Baron Kressel, Count Palfa Ivan Erdod, Chancellor of Hungary, Count Banfi, Governor and Provincial Grand Master of Transylvania, Count Stadion, Ambassador to London, and Baron von Swieten, Minister of Public Education, also joined. There were notable failures. Johann Caspar Lavater, the Swiss poet and theologian, rebuffed Nig. He did not believe the Order's humanitarian and rationalist aims were achievable by secret means. He further believed that a society's drive for members would ultimately submerge its founding ideals. Christoph Friedrich Nikolai, the Berlin writer and bookseller, became disillusioned after joining. He found its aims chimeric, and thought that the use of Jesuit methods to achieve their aims was dangerous. He remained in the order, but took no part in recruitment. Conflict with Rosicrucians At all costs Weishaupt wished to keep the existence of the order secret from the Rosicrucians, who already had a considerable foothold in German Freemasonry. While clearly Protestant, the Rosicrucians were anything but anti-clerical, pro-monarchic, and held views clearly conflicting with the Illuminati vision of a rationalist state run by philosophers and scientists. The Rosicrucians were not above promoting their own brand of mysticism with fraudulent seances. A conflict became inevitable as the existence of the Illuminati became more evident, and as prominent Rosicrucians, and mystics with Rosicrucian sympathies, were actively recruited by Nig and other overenthusiastic helpers. Kolorat was already a high-ranking Rosicrucian, and the mystic Prince Charles of Hesse Castle had a very low opinion of the rationalist higher grades of the Illuminati. The Prussian Rosicrucians, under Johann Christoph von Wallner, began a sustained attack on the Illuminati. Wallner had a specially engineered room in which he convinced potential patrons of the effectiveness of Rosicrucian magic, and his order had acquired effective control of the three globes and its attached lodges. Through this mouthpiece, the Illuminati were accused of atheism and revolutionary tendencies. In April 1783 Frederick the Great informed Charles of Hesse that the Berlin Lodges had documents belonging to the Minor Vals or Illuminati which contained appalling material, and asked if he had heard of them. All Berlin Masons were now warned against the order, which was now accused of Socinianism, and of using the liberal writings of Voltaire and others, alongside the tolerance of Freemasonry, to undermine all religion. In November 1783 the three globes described TH. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.